Starting a new business. What qualities define an excellent entrepreneur or leader? What are some of the qualities that make these people amazing? Many qualities define an excellent entrepreneur or leader. Some of the most amazing people have a combination of creativity, vision, passion, determination, and charisma. They can see opportunities where others see problems, and they are not afraid to take risks. For example, Richard Branson is a successful entrepreneur who has built a business empire from scratch. He has always been passionate about business and has an incredible ability to spot opportunities. He is also very charismatic, which has helped him build a strong brand. Another factor that contributes to his success is his willingness to take risks. He is not afraid to try new things, which has often led to him finding new areas of opportunity. Steve Jobs was another successful entrepreneur who had several qualities that made him unique. He was incredibly vision, and he had the ability to see potential in new technologies. He was also very passionate about his work, and he was always looking for ways to improve Apple's products. Jobs was also known for being very determined, and he was always willing to push himself and his team to their limits in order to achieve success. They are passionate about what they are doing and enthusiastic about their everyday work. If you get up in the morning and tell yourself, I'm going to work, you're doing it improperly. You need to change careers, and I'll repeat that statement or rationale several times during this course. In fact, the corporate culture of any business, whether it's a tiny company or a vast firm like Virgin, is always set by the person at the top. So Richard Branson has created so many amazing Virgin companies that if you ever fly on Virgin America or Virgin Atlantic, just watch how happy the employees are it doesn't appear like they have a job. As a result, extremely successful entrepreneurs are really passionate people who love what they do. Many of my students at the business schools where I teach want to work in investment banking, and I warn them not to pursue it unless they are enthusiastic about it since they would be unhappy otherwise. And don't worry about money, if you're enthusiastic about what you're doing, it will always come. It's incredible how many of the most successful people don't have work. They have interests. And the most successful individuals are constantly convinced that they are small groups of people can alter the world. They are also extremely foresighted. The most successful politicians and business people in the world are the ones who can speak effectively in front of groups of people and sell an idea, sell a concept, change the world, or make a dent in the universe. This is not a political class, but it goes without saying that the most successful politicians or business people in the world are the ones who can speak effectively in front of groups of people. Ronald Reagan and Barack Obama were both enthusiastic about speaking and could talk in front of huge gatherings and go off script. They were also able to really connect with people. This ability to connect with an audience and sell an idea is what makes these individuals so successful. Okay, so networking is essential. Relationship matter more than product knowledge. Outside of networking, what you learn in this course is less significant. The grades you receive in school are far less essential than your ability to network. Quite frequently, the world's finest CEOs or entrepreneurs did not have the highest grades, they learned how to network at an earlier later age, and it's not difficult to do, and I'll show you exactly how to do it. As a result, networking is essential, and connections are more vital than product expertise. You want to establish a business, but I won't let you until you've seen the following couple of slides. So, I'm going to start with the most crucial one, TAM. TAM stands for Total Addressable Market. TAM stands for Total Addressable Market and refers to the total potential revenue that a company can generate from selling its products or services. For example, if a company sells widgets for $100 each, and there are 10 million potential widget buyers in the world, then the company's TAM is $1 billion. Companies often use TAM as a way to measure their growth potential. If a company's TAM is large, it means that there is room for the company to grow by selling more products or services. If a company's TAM is small, it means that the company has limited growth potential. TAM can also be used as a way to assess a market's attractiveness. For example, if company A is considering entering market B, it will look at the size of market B's TAM. If market B has a large TAM, company A may decide that it is worth entering the market even if competition is fierce. However, if market B has a small TAM, company A may decide that the market is not worth entering. Most startups fail, thus, 
You should invest in or create businesses with a total addressable market opportunity. So what is the point of launching a company if the TAM is so low? How can I figure up my total addressable market? Netscape was a web browser company that was founded in 1994. The company's flagship product was Netscape Navigator, which was the first widely used web browser. However, by the early 2000s, Netscape's share of the web browser market had declined significantly, and it eventually ceased operations in 2003. So what is the point of launching a company if the TAM is so low? For Netscape, the answer may have been that its founders were simply ahead of their time. The internet was still in its infancy in the mid-1990s, and Netscape Navigator helped to popularize it. Without Netscape, the internet might not be where it is today. After all, why bother starting up a business if the potential market is so small? Well, there are actually a few reasons why it can still be worth it to launch a company, even if the TAM is low. First of all, even though the total potential market may be small, there may still be enough room for your company to carve out a good-sized chunk of that market. Secondly, even if the TAM is low now, it could potentially grow in the future as more people become aware of your product or service and decide to use it. Finally, even if the TAM remains low, you may still be able to generate enough revenue from your company to make it profitable. So while there are definitely some risks associated with starting up a business with a low TAM, there are also some potential rewards that make it worth considering. So don't let the size of the potential market dissuade you from starting your own company, you never know what success you might find. What does it imply? When does someone say that the point of launching a company is so low? This person is likely referring to the fact that the total addressable market, TAM, for many companies is relatively small. For example, the TAM for a company that sells only to businesses in the United States is around 300 million people, while the TAM for a company that sells only to businesses in Europe is around 740 million people. This implies that there are far fewer potential customers for a US-based company than there are for a European-based company. There are a few reasons why someone might launch a company despite having a low TAM. First, they may believe that their product or service is so superior to any other available option that they will be able to capture a large share of the market. Second, they may be targeting a niche market with few competitors and therefore believe they can achieve a leadership position in that market. Finally, they may believe that they can expand their business into other markets and eventually achieve a larger TAM. Ultimately, whether or not launching a company with a low TAM is worthwhile depends on the individual circumstances and goals of the entrepreneur. If they have a strong belief in their product or service and are confident in their ability to capture market share, then it may be worth taking the risk. However, if they are unsure about their chances of success or are not prepared to invest the time and resources necessary to grow their business, then it may be better. They are also large TAMs, or total adjustable markets. Google is one of the largest companies in the world, and they are always looking for ways to grow its business. One way they do this is by creating large TAMs, or total adjustable markets. This means that they create markets that are large enough to support their growth but also have the potential to be adjusted if necessary. This allows them to always be on the lookout for new opportunities and continue to grow their business at a rapid pace. We'll discuss internet concepts. Later. Okay, so other investment themes include security, and this is not a political course at all, but given the NSA's difficulties, there will be an enormous demand for more private firms providing security solutions, and that's a long-term investment theme that I believe will have longevity. There's also something called IoT that I'm looking into right now from a business capital standpoint. The Internet of Things is known as IoT. The Internet of Things, often shortened to IoT, is a network of physical devices, vehicles, home appliances, and other items embedded with electronics, software, sensors, and connectivity that enable these objects to connect and exchange data. The result is what is commonly referred to as the smart home, where devices can communicate with one another and be controlled remotely. One of the most well-known examples of the IoT in action is the Nest Learning Thermostat, which uses sensors to track temperature and humidity levels in a home in order to adjust the heating and cooling accordingly. Google's acquisition of Nest Labs in 2014 for $3.2 billion was seen as a major vote of confidence in the potential for the IoT. 
Other consumer electronics companies are also getting involved in the IoT space. Apple's HomeKit platform enables developers to create apps that work with Siri voice control to interact with various smart home devices. And Samsung's SmartThings platform offers a similar solution for its range of connected appliances and home electronics. The entertainment industry is also starting to get in on the action. Hollywood studios are using IoT technologies to collect data about moviegoers' preferences in order to better target their marketing campaigns. In one notable example, 20th Century Fox used beacon technology to deliver targeted content to moviegoers' phones as they walked by certain posters in a theater lobby. So, what's the use of researching firms or thinking about investing in them if you don't have the correct management team? And Michael Dell once said something amazing, ideas are commodities, but the execution is not. As a result, you must ensure that you have a superb jockey since the horse is less important. We'll go into picking the ideal management team in further depth later. Don't worry if you don't have any experience or if you've never launched a business, whether you're too young or too elderly. There is a method around that, and I'll show you exactly how to deal with it if you don't have experience but want to generate money. Some of the best entrepreneurs are also some of the best salespeople. This is because they understand that in order to be successful, they need to be able to market and sell their products or services. They may not always have the best products, but they make up for it with their passion and commitment to customer service and support. Examples of these types of entrepreneurs include Mark Benioff from Salesforce, Jeff Bezos from Amazon, and Richard Branson from Virgin. These individuals are proof that sometimes it's not about having the best product but about being the best at selling it.